Alright everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to dive into the new update of Bamboo Studio and some game-changing features that I think you'll enjoy. One in particular that I think will change the way that we print in the future when it's fully developed. Um, so in today's video, we'll be diving deep into the new Bamboo Studio update and checking out some really cool things. So if all that sounds good, and sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. All right, so here we are on Bamboo Studios Wiki or Bamboo Labs Wiki, um, <clears throat> looking at the 2.2 public release notes. And the very first thing here is what I am the most excited for and I think will be game changing in the way that we print in the future. And this is this Helio additive um, addition into the slicer. So Helio additive is a technology provider specializing in thermal simulation and optimization of G code, meaning that it can simulate all of the heat characteristics of your print. And in the future, it will optimize the G code. So the optimization of the G code isn't there yet, but we can do the analysis. Um, there are some steps you do need to enable it and um, accept a terms and conditions, uh, end user licensing agreement. I'm guessing because it's a third party Helio additive that's being added into the slicer. And then you can take a look at your slices in um, simulation and get a look at their thermal characteristics. And what's really, really cool about this is it gives you these um, ranges right here that can kind of tell you about your print. Um, and we'll take a look at this here in a minute, but um, you know, from zero to minus 100 means that it's too cold and tensile strength can drop by up to 50%, which makes sense. Um, you know, if you've ever had some prints where some pieces are, some parts of the print are different than the others or it's strong in one spot, but not in another. This is highlighting some of those reasons why. Um, zero is um, the ideal with maximum strength and dimension accuracy. And then um, plus 200 is too hot. So anything below zero is going to be too cold and anything above zero is going to be too hot. And... Um, you know, layers may stay molten too long, leading to sagging or collapse. Um, so if any of these errors, right, are resonating with you, then this is going to be a, um, you know, a game changer for us. Um, the one thing is, where did it say it, is the simulated G code is um, not available, or the simulation is available, but the uh, G code optimization will be introduced in a future release. So let's go ahead and dive into Bamboo Studio and take a look at this. All right, so here we are in Bamboo Studio and we have one of our Nimitz Benchies in here as well. Now, in order to use the Helio thing, it's not in here by default. You do need to go into your preferences, scroll down, and you'll see Helio options. You'll want to enable the Helio options and then a privacy thing and terms and conditions thing comes up that you need to OK. Once you've done that, then it will be available once you slice your object. So we'll go ahead and slice our uh, Benchy here and you'll see Helio simulation is now available. So I'll go ahead and click that. And it says to please set the above temperature according to the actual situation. The more accurate the data is, the more precise the analysis results will be. Now, generally, when I print, I believe the chamber temperature is around 35 to 50 or whatever. So we'll just put 40 in there. Again, this is something you can print. Look at what your chamber temperature is and put the, the most accurate in there and it'll help with this. So let's go ahead and confirm, and then we'll see that it's slicing um, down here. This does take about a minute or two. Uh, I 
guess, depending on what type of computer you have. Um, so I'll probably fast forward through this part as it does its simulation. All right, so here we are after it's done. So one thing to note, when I first did this, it said simulation failed, three tries left, two tries left, one try left, zero tries left, and it kind of froze there. I let it sit for like a minute or two and it didn't do anything. So I just went up here, new project, put the Benchy back in, re-ran it. The weird thing that I've seen it do a couple times now is it stays at 35% and then it'll just complete itself. Um, so all in all, probably took five minutes to get this done, even with the error. So it wasn't that bad to run the simulation. Again, your results may vary. I'm not sure if it's sending this over the cloud or if it's actually doing things on my computer. But here's what we get. So we get the thermal index mean. And if we remember, 100 is too hot. So anything that's red is too hot. Anything green is ideal and anything blue is too cold. And where do we mostly find issues and little layer lines and everything on this Benchy is sure enough right here where it is saying it's way too cold um, in order to do this stuff. We'll see on the top is really the only place that has ideal temperature, um, even though there's some that's too hot that's right there. So super cool. And in the future, um, we should be able to click something to optimize this to make the entire part green. And that's what I think will be game changing. Um, if we take a look at these thermal characteristics and can make them even all the way up this print, that will make the quality of all of our prints um, jump up a couple of levels um, just from that. So as you can see in this thermal analysis, if you've ever printed this and, you know, generally the places where this has issues or it's not completely perfect are on this overhang and this one here. So it's super interesting um, that it said it's too cold in those places right there. And then sometimes I even see these lines in it as well. And you, you can see that it's showing a thermal difference there. So really, really cool. Uh, go in there and um, enable this and mess around with it and, you know, change your your uh, filament temperatures or whatever. And, um, you know, see if you can get this to be a little bit more green and then be on the lookout for future updates where we'll be able to optimize the G code um, from this Helio um, additive as well. Really, really cool tool. Um, don't sleep on this one. Uh, start messing around with this one. I think this will be an easy thing to add into our print workflow that'll be game changing for the quality of the prints. All right, so here we are back in the Bamboo Lab Wiki for the second thing that we'll talk about today. We probably won't take a look at it in Bamboo Studio, but I think this one is funny. There's all kinds of cool updates in here. Make sure whenever you um, download a new version of this that you just at least do a quick glance over some of the features that have been added in here because there's some cool things. Um, but this one's pretty cool. The fuzzy skin painting tool now lets you do manual fuzzy skin. So now you can just manually paint fuzzy skin on your objects, which is pretty uh, pretty cool. So I know a lot of us have talked about the fuzzy skin and how to get the different skins on there. Um, looks like now you can even manually paint where the fuzziness is. Uh, so that should be pretty cool. A couple of other things that I saw in here, this seam avoidance and overhang looks <clears throat> pretty interesting. Um, third party calibration support for printers. Um, so you will see some more calibration in there, excluding the H2D. Um, so other models of printers in there. <clears throat> There's some cool painting um, enhancements that have been done as well. Um, some new AI monitoring um, additions in there. Clumping detection, which it keeps bringing a pop-up up about how it's doing that. And everything like that. So make sure that you, um, you know, at least scroll through these and uh, get a good idea of what changes are coming. And generally, they put the real important ones up at the top, as we saw today. 
which is the Helio Additive Simul Simulation Integration, right? And uh, the big thing here is can't wait for the optimization for the G-code. So go in there and play around with the Helio feature as well as the manually adding of the fuzzy scan. And I hope you enjoy uh, using both of these. I really, really can't wait for the Helio to be fully integrated as I'm sure you can't wait either. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my next one and join us every Saturday evening for a print live stream where we look at everybody's prints and get some really good ideas on our future printing uh, endeavors. Um, so thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you on the next one.